I've had this huge hole in my family room wall because we ripped out the old 90s TV nook that my wife hated. Whoa. And today we're gonna finish off this space and I'm gonna install some custom built-ins and I might even try to add in a little secret to take advantage of the extra space we have back there. I'm Brad from Fix This Build That. Let's build something awesome. If you've not checked lately, lumber prices are insane. I bought three sheets of three quarter and two sheets of one quarter and it was $328 and 66 cents. So <laughs> I am going to uh, measure thrice and cut nice. I've got all the panels cut down now, but before I started cutting these down, a little spidey sense started going off. And I remembered the last time I did this, this did not work out very well for me because the edges are not necessarily parallel anymore. As much as the prices of plywood have gone up, the quality seems to be going down. And just taking a quick measurement, if I look at this, I can definitely already see we're almost a 16th off between the top and the bottom. And again, I have not touched these sides. So these are factory edges. So these panels are not square at all, but you know what is square? The Carpenter Squares on our new Maker's Mountain t-shirts. Go check them out, fixthisbuildthat.com forward slash shop. I am gonna be putting a right angle right here and setting up my track saw and squaring up one of these edges and then doing the rest of the cuts back on the table saw to get nice square panels so that my assembly will go, you know, as well as we can hope. All right, now that we've got parallel sides and at least one square edge, I can use that to go against the fence and start ripping all these panels to width so we can start assembly for our base cabinets and then the uppers. I've got all the parts here in front of me for the base cabinets and there will be doors on the front of these. So these lower cabinets will just sit on a base so I don't have to do a toe kick just because of the way that the trim is gonna work in there. You'll see that later. But up above there, we're gonna have a bookshelf and that's only gonna be 12 inches deep. And that's because we don't want it to be the full depth of it because that just looks stupid and crazy. So we're gonna have a nice 12 inch depth there, but that's gonna leave some space behind it, which I don't know, maybe we can do something with. We'll figure it out. But right now I'm gonna start by pocket holing all these together and just making the simplest cabinets I have ever made. All right, now these cabinets are kind of big, so I need to put this extra little sheet of MDF on here because the bench is just not wide enough. And I need to make a new one that is wider and I, I've been saying it forever, so maybe it'll happen one day. All right, these are gonna go together a little strangely. <laughs> strangely a word? I don't know if strangely is a word or not. The pocket holes on the top are gonna be on the underside. Now for the bottom, the pocket holes will be facing out, which is what you want, because you want those screws going into the meat of the wood, not into the edge of the wood. You know, I probably should have just screwed them in and not done pocket holes, but you know, mistakes were made. It's not even really a mistake. I mean, it, it works, it's fine. I'm just gonna put a few screws in from the side here on that top piece, and that'll support it just because the pocket holes are not in that strong position. Above the lower cabinets, we will have that 12 inch bookcase I mentioned earlier. And so I'm just gonna take this piece of wood that we already cut down and turn that into the shelves. It's pretty easy. Oh, don't hit back. Now I'm gonna move on to the tops of the built-ins and I'm gonna cut the shelving out of the other plywood that I broke down earlier. Before I start assembling the upper bookcase, uh, I want to trim out these shelves. So these are just three quarter inch shelving. Obviously there's a plywood front, so we want to cover that. So to add some strength, I have some one and a half inch trim. So once we get these attached to the shelf, it's gonna give it that nice beefy look and really make a presence instead of just being a wimpy little three quarter inch shelf. To attach the trim, I'm just gonna use some wood glue and some inch and a half me nails. That'll hold in place nicely until it dries. Now, since these are gonna be painted, I'm just gonna wipe away any of the glue with a wet rag. That way it'll dry and we won't have to scrape it off later. I'll run through the rest of these and after they're dry, we can start assembly.
And while these edges are drying, I'm also gonna go ahead and put some wood filler in the holes just so that can be drying while the glue is drying as well. Gotta kill two birds with one stone. I will just go ahead and let those dry, but come on, look at that nice thick shelf versus this thin one. Whenever I see a shelf like this, it reminds me of the old Wendy's commercial. Where's the beef? <laughs> this is ridiculous. This looks great. All right, the shelves are drying so I can start assembling the top bookcases. And I cut a little spacer here and I'm just gonna use this as a story stick, if you will. So I'm just gonna take my spacer and then line it up with the bottom. And then I can make my mark. I'm also gonna take a scrap of the plywood and put it right there to represent the shelf. And then that way, I'll know where the top should be as well. And I'll do the same thing on the back side, so I'll know where I would put the screws when I start assembling. Then I can just move the spacer over and line it up to the top line here, then keep marking all the way down. All right, and this should make assembly a lot faster and easier as I go through it, instead of having to measure and mark during the process. You know the great thing about woodworking? There is almost an unlimited amount of opportunity to make mistakes. Um, I completely have this upside down because this is the bottom. <laughs> right, so if everything laid out and in place and my shelf facing the right direction, I'm just gonna do a little bead of glue here and then I'll tack it in place with some more me nails. Now the couple nails in there, we'll just tap in some screws to hold everything in place more permanently. Now I can just rinse and repeat all the way up and then do the other side the same way. All right, I am jumping outside because it is gonna be raining a little bit later and I wanna spray as much as I can outside. I hate spraying inside and I wanna get it in before the rain goes. So I'm gonna set everything up out here, get going, and then we'll just uh, spray and pray that it doesn't rain. Now while that paint is drying outside, I'm gonna switch over to the face frames and the cabinet doors, and I'm gonna be using poplar for those instead of pine. A poplar is a little harder than pine, so it's gonna take a beating a little bit more, which is gonna be good for the doors and the face frames, which you're gonna see a lot of use. And since these boards are rough and a little thick, I need to take them through my joiner and planer and table saw to get them all to size so we can start making those door frames. If you're looking at picking up a joiner and a planer to do some milling of your own, you should check out Woodcraft, the sponsor of today's video. Now they are my go-to woodworking supply and hardware store and they have tools, materials, supplies, basically anything that you need for doing woodworking projects. I'm lucky enough to have one here in Nashville. That's actually where I got the poplar from, but they're also in over 70 different cities around the US. If you don't have one local to you though, you can go to woodcraft.com and check out everything that they have. And they'll even ship large machinery to your house. So if you're thinking about doing that upgrade, at least go check them out and see what they have to offer. I'll have a link down below in the description to woodcraft.com. And a big thank you to Woodcraft for being an awesome sponsor of the channel. All right, I'm gonna start off with the face frame. So I can go ahead and move all these out of the way. because so these are gonna be for the doors. We'll do them later. And now I've got my four parts for the face frame. I'm gonna start by cutting these to size and then I'll put some pocket holes in the rails. And so I can join these together and get them attached onto the base cabinet. The top ones are gonna be an inch and a half but the sides are gonna be two and a half inches. And I'll show you why in a little bit, but it's basically because they're gonna be installed and there's gonna be trim going over the side. So we'll have a similar reveal. Now I can just lay these out and we can start assembling the frames. And uh, if you don't have one of these face frame clamps, this is exactly what these are made for. So these work awesome. All right, the face frames are ready for the cabinets, but the cabinet is just the right size that uh, it's like the worst of both worlds. Either I can put it up on the bench and be working at my like chin height, or I can lay it on its back and work at knee height. I think we're gonna opt for knee height today. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do these on the ground. It's gonna be a little bit easier to see them and line them up. Echo, echo, echo. 
Now, before I put the face frame on, since we don't have a back, I needed to check for square. So I measured my diagonals. It was actually kind of out. So I had to kind of squeeze this cabinet together from corner to corner and to get these two measurements to be the same, which means that it is square. And so if you don't do that, then it can be racked and then everything's gonna assemble really weird. So make sure that you check that. But now I can just put some glue around here and I will throw a few me nails in the face frame, let it dry up and we'll be good to go. The doors are gonna be kind of a shaker style with these as a frame with an inset panel. So that means that the doors are gonna be inside of the face frame, not overlapping. If you use an overlay door, then you know, the dimensions don't really matter as much because it's over there and you can't really see what it's hiding. But an inset door is gonna have a little reveal that is gonna show itself all around the door as well as in between each door. So getting them exactly right it's gonna be a challenge. So I'm gonna go ahead and start measuring and marking things out and getting them cut down to size and then we'll talk about some joinery. All right, I cut down the door frame parts to size and here's how it's gonna work. So we're gonna have two of these uprights that are gonna run the full length of the door and then the top one will connect here as well as one on the bottom. Now there'll be a panel inside here and that is going to be quarter inch MDF which I'm going to cut a groove to fit that so it will fit right in between the panel and be captured by all of the frame pieces. So I'm gonna start off by making the center groove that's gonna hold that panel. And I'll do that here on the table saw just by making one pass, flipping around and doing another pass and kind of widening this gap until it fits the panel perfectly. All right, after a few dozen runs, I got this fit just the way I want it. It is not too snug, slides smoothly, but uh, just a little bit of friction. So now I can go ahead and run all the parts through and get the same groove on all of them. Now that we have our grooves, all I need now is to define the little tongue here so then it will fit in like a puzzle. So I'm gonna add in another couple blades on the dado blade to make it wider so I can take it all in one pass. I'll get that set up and then make all my cuts. Check that out. Oh, this looks great. Oh man, I'm just gonna cut the panels and get to assembly. I love this. All right, I went ahead and did a dry fit and that is always a smart idea because I've had so many things where uh, I've gone in and started getting glue on everything and then <laughs> realized that it doesn't fit. So uh, I would highly encourage that. But now I can take these apart and start putting some glue on them and get them in final assembly. Right, we're just gonna put a little bit of, of wood glue just on the tongues and then slide them in. Once you get that glue on there, you want to kind of start working fast because it'll make the wood swell. Drop the panel in here. There we go. Then you can just check for square. And if you're all lined up and your parts were cut right, then you should be okay. Put this to the side and do the other ones. The doors are out of the clamps, they're looking great, and now we can start doing some hardware. So I'm gonna be using these soft closed door hinges, and I need to mount some holes for those on the doors, and I can use this jig here. This is the Craig Concealed Hinge Jig. Let me show you how it works. So this is the back side of my door, and I marked up three and a half inches, and then I can just put the jig on here and then clamp it in place. And then this gives me the perfect offset for that hinge. And then here's the other part of the jig that has a Forstner bit in it. Now all I gotta do is drill it out. So there you go, now I've got the perfect hole and I can just put the little cup in there and use those holes for mounting and it works great. I actually love using this jig, the little shavings that it makes is awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and drill the rest of these doors, get the hardware on the cabinets installed and then put these in place. Cause I'm probably gonna have to make some adjustments to the doors before I start painting. But while we're doing the painting, we could then switch over and start installing the cabinets. We're almost there. Got the inset doors all mounted and they look great. They are soft close hinges. 
very soft. I just made a little stop that uh, goes on the top of the face frame and that holds them right now. But these look fantastic. I can go ahead now, take these doors off and get them painted up and then uh, start some install. So to get these ready for install, I went ahead and drilled some holes for dowels so that this will be referenced and that the tops will not move when we attach them. Also, I started looking at this back and look at all this space I have back here. I gotta take advantage of it. So let me show you what I came up with. So I really wanted to use this back area for a secret stash. And so what I did is I cut the back plate short and made it into a smaller piece just for this lower portion. Then I drilled in some little cleats on the side and I put some screws in them so that they could reference some magnets which I put into the back of the panel. So when you put it in place, it works like this. <laughs> so there's a little secret door that I can access the back. I still have to figure out exactly how I'm gonna have that open and still have it be a secret. So stay tuned and we'll see what I can figure it out. All right, we are inside and ready for install. And I put together a little base that the cabinets are gonna sit on. And this is because there's no toe kick, so they'll just sit right on top of this. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in and get it leveled and then secure it to the floor and we can start bringing in the cabinets. I get the bases in in one of the cabinets and I went ahead and took care of the electrical. The cords were not long enough to get down into the base cabinet. So what I did instead was did a junction box in that top side. That way we have access to it and I can extend the power down into the bottom of the cabinet. So that's all gonna work out. Now also, I built some little boxes for the secret stash area. So I didn't want it to be exposed to the insulation when you went back there. So I just have these little boxes that sit in there. And again, I use dowels. So our little secret stash spot will be nice and protected. And also I might put in just a little wireless LEDs or something in there for a little bit of light. I'm gonna slide in the last cabinet, then we can tie them all together, get everything trimmed out, and we'll be ready for the reveal. All right, that was looking good. Woo! Now the electronics are all working. I got them wired up in this lower one so my Xbox can sit up here. We're gonna fill in these base cabinets with all of our games and little things. And I am loving the inset doors with the soft close. And those reveals turned out really nice. This is a huge transformation from that old 90s TV nook. Loving the way this looks. Oh yeah, and about that secret stash spot. Now these little secret compartments here are just a preview of what's gonna come when I do the next side. I'm planning something way bigger. Stay tuned for that one. Our family loves Marvel movies and Thor is one of our favorite characters. So I thought only the worthy should be able to open the secret compartment. Whosoever holds this hammer, if he be worthy, shall possess the power to open my secret stash. Yeah! This drink, I like it. Another! <laughs> if you wanna check out some more home renovation videos, I've got a playlist queued up for you right there. I think you're gonna like. I wanna give a big thank you to those folks that have been joining the FTBT Builders Club. And until next time, guys, get out there and build something awesome.